What's up, y'all? It's Zach with Corporate. Now, look, every now and then we try to mix it up for y'all. Because, you know, so look, dependency and consistency is really important. But even within those lanes of consistency, you got to have a little bit of variety. You know what I mean? You don't come home and just eat the same thing every day. Or even if you do, you know, you got a meal prep thing. Maybe sometimes you put a little red sauce. Maybe sometimes you put a little green sauce. You know, you got to just, you know, mix it up from time to time. Maybe sometimes you grill it. Maybe sometimes you saute. Maybe sometimes you rotisserie. You got to just... Am I hungry? Yes, I'm hungry. Oh, my bad. Listen, check it out. We have another entry <laughs> for y'all from our See It to Be It series. Amy C. Weininger, CEO of Lead at Any Level, as well as the author of Network Beyond Bias. She's actually been a member of the team for so while for a while now. So shout out to you, Amy. Yes, thank you very much for all of your work here. Um, and part of her work has been in driving the series called See It to Be It. And the purpose of the series is to actually highlight black and brown professionals in these very prestigious roles, like within uh, industries that maybe we, and when I say we, I mean black and brown folks, I see y'all, that we may not always even know exist or envision ourselves in, hence the name of the series, right? So check this out. We're going to go ahead and transition from here. The next thing you're going to hear is an interview with Amy C. Weininger and a super dope professional. I know y'all going to love it. Catch y'all next time. Peace. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining me. No problem. Good to be here. Thank you. So, as you know, the series is um, designed to help young people, and particularly young people of color, see all of the opportunities that are available to them in their careers, in the economy. And um, we're going to spend a little time later talking about specific support systems available to people of color in your industry. But first, can you just tell me a little bit about how you got involved in digital marketing and um, then how that evolved into a speaking career? Okay, sure. How I started, it was um, a while ago. I worked, got my degree in marketing, and then I got a job at Google as a marketing specialist. And through that job, part of it was we would go around the country to talk to small business owners about how to use Google products to grow. So this was anything from Google Plus, Google Advertisements, Google Map Listings, and pretty much all the Google tools that can help a small business and also a large company out as well. So through that experience, it really helped me figure out what I would like to do long term in the future and what's it meant to me to do that for small business owners and other organizations. And once I started doing that training uh, through all those uh, small business workshops, that's when I started realizing that I have a kind of a skill for being to people. And in also not only that, but skill in with um, digital marketing in general. So got certified a while back in some of the e-marketing topics and decided to, uh, <coughs> to keep pursuing it over time. So then, I ended up learning more about the industry as far as speaking after that Google experience when I started researching more about it. So, that's what happened. so was your background before you went to Google, was your background in marketing or was it in technology? It was in marketing actually. So okay. yeah, so yeah, degree in marketing. So some of the companies I worked for, yeah, some of the companies I worked for in the past, it was a specifically marketing jobs and then uh that's yeah before before even google and then uh, the good thing about my experience at google is that they we would i would do about two to three i'll say different jobs every six months and i got to really learn what i would like to do long term. the reason i asked about your background before you went to google is i think a lot of people think of google as a tech company mm -hmm. and if you're outside looking in, you might think, well, how would somebody without a technical background get into a tech company? And I think the lesson um, from your story is that marketing is a skill that's transferable to a lot of different industries, including tech. Yeah. And so um, we have to think not just about our function, or not just about our industry, but also about our function and how that function can be used in different industries. Have you found that to be true? 
Yeah, that's true. That's I never really thought of it that way, but yeah, that makes sense. Like uh, doing something that can uh, can that can you can use in different industries as well. Because because like even when I was there, it was a I was probably say out of a hundred people, I would say maybe ten people, you know, were minority. Yeah, so it was like it was yeah, still a big. I think it's still a challenge for them as well. So as far as far as uh, being more diverse with the teams that they have. And especially the, the marketing team that I was part of, it was a, it was a rare to have diversity. But yeah, having something that you can transfer to go to multiple industries and tra- figuring out how to stand out, really important. That's great. And so what was the biggest surprise to you about, you know, as you kind of went through school and you decided like marketing was going to be your focus, once you got into the work world, what surprised you about the job or about the function that you didn't expect while you were in school? Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't expect to have to kind of like have to deal with the, the politics side of everything, you know, <laughs> like dealing with the organizational structure. I thought I would just get the job. Everybody would be fun and happy. No, no issues, no drama. <laughs> you know. So, but going there and learning that it's not just about the job. It's more so about how can you deal with different types of people with different backgrounds and within the organization. So that's that's one that's one of the main things I learned. And then also just like being a being able to be a leader and communicating your ideas. Whereas before when I was in college, I was more I was I was kind of like on the the quiet side, you know. So like learning like in the corporate, you have to kind of like communicate your ideas to the right people. So that's the one thing that I I've uh, tried to get better at over time, right when I got into the workforce. Yeah, I think so much of success in an office or success in a business is not doing good work. I think so. I know a lot of women and a lot of people of color, we tend to suffer from imposter syndrome. We're, we're worried that we have to kind of prove ourselves and prove that we're good enough to be where we are. And I think what we tend to miss is the political side. And it's we're spending so much time with our heads down trying to do the best job we can that we don't take time to make sure that other people know that we're doing a good job. Have you, have you found that to be the case? Yeah. That, yeah. I think that's true. And uh, with many uh, people that I've uh, met in the past, as far as anybody trying to go after like their goals, I think people have so much, many people, when they get into the workforce, they have get so much experience, but nobody knows about the experience. <laughs> you know, it's like ever so many of you are doing awesome things and then they don't even put it on their LinkedIn profile, what they've done. You know, like they, they don't have a, if they're trying to market stuff, they don't have a, a website to show, showcase what you've done. And I guess some people think that it might be bragging and everything, but you got to think about who's going to tell the story. You know, <laughs> who's going to really tell your story in general. No one's really, not many people are going to um, know how experiences you've, you've had unless you tell somebody that you say exactly what you did. So you just, I feel like people got to spend time to learn how to market themselves and uh, kind of showcase things that stand out with their career. Can really Absolutely. Help Building a personal brand is so important and it starts, whether you're doing it intentionally or not, it starts yeah. the minute you step into the job. Yeah. The minute. Right. Yeah. It definitely changes pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. <laughs> you know, I got it. Uh, especially if you're trying to network within the organization and try to get promotions, they're definitely important. Absolutely. Like it's not about just about the good work you're doing. Yeah. So your brand is really what other people are saying about you. And if other people don't know that you're there, then you don't have a brand and that's tough. It's tough to overcome that. Yeah, definitely. So I always tell people, look, it's not bragging if it's true. (laughs) So if you've actually done it, you better speak up because it's not bragging if it's true. Somebody else is going to speak up for this though, right? That's right. <laughs> stand out so, these days. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said, yeah, you got to stand out these days. That's right. So if somebody's not in marketing and they're thinking that might be a really good field for them, um, first of all, what kind, what characteristics or what strengths do you think play well in a marketing space for a person? For a person, I would say being able to look at things and how to figure out how you can make things better? How can you uh, improve awareness about a brand? Like just a lot of you, I feel like when it comes to marketing, you got to have new ideas on a constant basis. So if you're that type of person that is always looking at how to make something better or maybe look, make something look better 
or you can, you're able to connect with multiple people. I think that's a, it's a definitely a good career. And uh, and as far as it, and it, there's so many different types of marketing. There's marketing yourself, and then there's marketing at a corporation level. And if you work at a corporation level, you really need to know like the latest trends or what's going on, what companies are using to market their their organization. And these days, it's not a, it's not about just being able to design a brochure anymore, you know, or just being just being able to create a logo. It's more so people want everything, you know. They want you to know about social media, something about social media. You don't have to be a complete expert, you know, but you need to know what's going on out there as far as like. Uh, the different channels, email marketing, social media, things like that. And so if somebody sees themselves in that profile, that they're an idea person and they, they like staying up on trends and, and that sort of thing, where can they go? What kind of resources are out there to help people learn more about the industry, learn more about the function, and kind of feel out if it's a good fit for them? I would say it's American Marketing Association. That's uh that's where I that's where I started. That's where I got a lot of my experience. And over there, you're gonna meet people that that's what they do on a day to day basis for a full time job. They're marketing managers, marketing specialists, directors, executives. So pretty much everybody says CMOs go there. So they have the national level, and of course, they have like pretty much a lot of local chapters on the professional level uh, in pretty much all the major cities. And then the even if you're a student. They have like a college chapter, which I was part of when I was in college too. So like that's the best way to start. So I'll give you, they'll give you every month, they'll give you what's new, what's going on, and how you can give you ideas on how you can stay up to date. That's great. And so I'm guessing since you're a speaker, you do a lot of work with the association now, probably on the other side, right? Yeah, you know what? I haven't really started. I plan on in the future. You know, oh, like okay. that specific or that specific organization, not yet, but I do work with other associations. But but yeah, that's definitely a plus. That uh, that comes with me being part of it. I can uh, I'm probably more likely to be able to speak at some of those events. So, yeah. so I think it's interesting because it took me so long to even realize that as a so I'm a first generation professional, and it took me so many years to realize that associations even existed and what they were for and how I could use them. Mm. And you know, and to me that's just it, it's a great tragedy of my career that I didn't figure that out sooner. So, and it's funny because. It, you know, I've done a few of these interviews now, and every time I ask somebody, how do people learn more, they always mention an association. Oh, and I really? wish I would have asked that question when I was younger to people who were experienced in different fields. Yeah. It's like so many people are the, that go to the associations, it's part of the same goal. You know, they're all trying to reach the same goal within uh, what they're doing, and they're trying to look for new ideas from other people. And it's just like a good environment, and it's not – it's, I feel like it's different from just going to a networking event because a networking event, you have so many people with different types of uh, goals. Some people are looking for a job. Some people are looking to network for business. So it's like, usually those don't work out. But if you go to association, it's specifically what you need. So like targeted, actually. Exactly. And they usually offer educational sessions at their meetings or at their conferences. And so, you know, you, you can find something depending on what your skill level is or your experience level, you can find something that is applicable to you. And then you, you know, you can network with people who have, you know, similar experience or more experience and get involved and really learn and, and kind of build a, a name for yourself within your industry just yep. by volunteering, right? Yeah, just by volunteering. You know, that's a good, good way to really uh, get to know the right people in there. So volunteer your time whenever you can, whether it's local or national, highly recommend it. Excellent. So can you tell me a little bit about what do you think about the current or future talent demands in marketing? Do you think that this is an industry or a, a function that's going to need to staff up over time? Or do you see kind of leveling out or trailing off in the near future? Uh, I think that the demand is going to get higher. So because so, so more and more organizations are realizing the importance of uh, being online and understanding what's going on. So you have many uh, org people that they've been in marketing for a long time, but they've done it the traditional way. So there's still like a high need for people to come in to do like the online marketing side of it, social media, digital marketing. So that's uh, continues to grow. As more and more people get online, more and more people depend on it. Uh, and I think especially since organizations these days are actually making revenue from online 
channels, you know, like it's like social media and uh, the digital market channels. So it's more and more neat. So I think it's uh, just going to just going to grow as well as uh, what's needed. But yeah, definitely understanding more than just one area of marketing is what I've seen. I mean, if you look at many job descriptions, they're going to ask you for those multiple areas, not just being able to do Photoshop or just social media, but email marketing as well. And yeah, everything. Excellent. So you had mentioned that when you were at Google, you were maybe one of a handful of, of people of color in the marketing team that you were on. And I would imagine that that's the case for a lot of people of color in different companies around, around the U S. Um, I know that there's, and I'm going to screw up the percentage, but something like 3% of marketing executives are women or something like that, like a really low number. Um, they have a whole conference around it now, I think. And so, where can people go who maybe feel a little alone or they want to get involved, but they don't want to be the only um, in their office? What kinds of communities exist for people of color that can help them feel connected so that they can maintain their stamina while pursuing their passion? Okay. Like uh, a lot of times I think there's, there's different organizations and you know, many, if you, if they're part of an organization, many, companies are starting to have like communities within their organization, such as, uh, I think, I can't remember. There's a, there's within Google, there's uh, like, I think black Google Googlers or some things like that. So things, things that are specific to a niche within your organization, but like, so people can have, have a, have a, a different experience. I mean, even in different associations, you're, there's always, they could, there could be subgroups, you know, like that specifically target a different uh, group of people. So I would say it starts with the associations and then from there, figure out what other organizations specifically focus on uh, who they are, what, like what, what culture background they have. Okay. No, that's helpful. And I, I think to the importance of employee resource groups or business resource groups or affinity networks, whatever they're called, the larger companies tend to have those where when you come in, you can kind of identify you know, pick a group that you feel more comfortable with and, and find a mentor maybe, or at least, you know, know where, know where to go for some help navigating all of the politics, like you said earlier, and, you know, kind of getting the inside scoop on some of the unwritten rules of the workplace, because those rules change wherever you go, right? Yeah, yeah. Or you can always create one too. That's <laughs> true. That is true. Yeah, yeah. So I want to switch gears a little bit, talk about your work as a speaker. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about imposter syndrome and I'll get to that in just a second. But as a speaker, you know, we have to position ourselves as experts mm -hmm. and the term expert, right? There's no national certification of expertise that you go and you take a test and somebody says, here, you're an expert. You can use that in your, in your brand or your title. So what do you think makes someone an expert? in their field or what makes you an expert in your field? When it comes to being experts, I would say really just experience, just like what can you, what kind of specific experience have you had when it comes to what you're talking about or what you're, what you're doing? Because there's a lot of, in any, in literally you can just wake up tomorrow and call yourself an expert. <laughs> <laughs> So how can you how can you stand out from everybody else? And what I always recommend is specifically getting experience. I mean, sometimes people say, "Hey, they can't get a job, so they can't get the experience to become an expert." But you can always volunteer. You can always like do stuff uh, for free for organizations. So, for instance, when it comes to marketing, I've done stuff for free for organizations just to get experience. And then once I learn it and once I get good at it, then I could say that I'm an expert. You know, that's what that's when I when I know the ins and outs of it. And then you kind of start you realize that you're more advanced than other the, the audience that you're trying to reach as well. Mm -hmm. For example, if it's a if your audience is small businesses and they have nothing to do with marketing and I'm a marketing person, if I've done if I've worked with an organization for about six months or a year where I help them with their marketing and then help them uh, drive traffic or revenue, mm -hmm. then. I'm an expert to the small business. <laughs> you know, I'm an oh, expert I love to that. So you see expertise on a continuum. Yeah. Yeah. It's and like a, so long as you're ahead of the person you're talking to, you're an expert. I love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember. I, and, and it also experience though. <laughs> so, so, 
I'm trying to be serious though. Sometimes, so I'm not saying read an article and then you're an expert, but <laughs> right. But actually, actually knowing how to do it. No, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, so, yeah. have you have you struggled with imposter syndrome yourself? Yeah, I think so. I mean, sometimes I'm trying to remember what imposter imposter syndrome is not good enough, right? Yeah, it's a feeling that like the more you know, the more you feel like you don't know, so you never quite feel like you've arrived, or you feel like, you know, the way I experience it is, I, I, the way I experience it is, I feel like people are going to find out that I'm just faking it, yeah. and so, you know, the way that manifests itself for me is I have like a wall full of certifications to prove to myself that I'm not just faking it, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> what does that look like for you? Okay. Yeah, that, that, that does happen. You know, like, uh, I feel like depending on, uh, your, I mean, for me, it was more so like, since I was younger, I started doing some of the speaking stuff at a, you know, like younger. And then of course being a minority, I kind of have to say, I feel like I have to say every single thing that I've done, you know, cause I, like, if, if, if I don't, they're going, Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it does feel that way. Sometimes it does feel like that. That, uh, that that syndrome comes on, but I gotta remember. I start to remember that. Okay, I have I do have legitimate experience, and I start to look at what have been the testimonials. You know, what have been the reviews about after the event? I look at the reviews. That kind of helps me understand that. Okay, okay, I feel like I am at that level that I'm at right now. So, but yeah, it's it's, it's I feel like it's a constant struggle, especially when you're trying to move forward. Like if I'm so like, for instance, when I first started, I'm so used to doing like a really small events, you know? And I thought, okay, I can't do a, a event with more than 10 people, you know? Like, you know, like, and then realizing, you know, like just trying stuff out and you realize, okay, it's, it's, it's okay. You know, you gotta grow some out, right? Definitely. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I like that, that, you know, you just keep growing and just keep taking the steps. I think that's so important. Do you feel like you have to clear a higher bar than others you said that you know you feel like because because you're black you have to like list everything you've ever done so that people understand that you're the real deal do you feel like that like there's a bar and then there's a bar for you that's higher yeah definitely uh yeah i definitely feel that that way because you have to because i look at it as people don't when people see like uh people like uh, like myself, since I'm black, you know, they don't really see this type of person in that position. You know, like mm -hmm. you don't see that many minority uh, speakers out there or even just like I said, like when it comes to marketing and tech companies, since you don't see that much, they probably automatically assume that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, like it's been times where I walk in uh, to the presentation, people don't think I'm the presenter. You know, they, don't, they probably don't think I'm a presenter. So I have to like really show meet all the expectation and like uh i feel like i have to do a little bit more too so i gotta like kind of um give 110 percent you know instead of just trying to give 80 or 70 you know and get, getting by and people can get by you know but if you're in a different uh category you do have i feel like you do have to put a little bit more effort in and i think one challenge is that initial reactions to initially when people see you then you have then after they hear your um your content and everything like that that's when they kind of understand okay this person is an expert but the challenge is the beforehand you know what matters is before right <laughs> you know in order to in order to get a client they still have to you still have to present yourself effectively and show that you know what you're doing so that's where the challenge is like everybody can like you but it's like you have to still get that client first right, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> you feel there's there's a bar right you know yeah, now I, I definitely, I can definitely see how that's true. Um, and I think the, the more differences a person has relative to the larger group, the higher that bar gets and the more hurdles you have to clear and the more you have to prove yourself. And, you know, that can be exhausting. I was a woman in tech for 20 years. And, you know, I would have, I would have men much older than me when I was younger, at least, men much older than me who would say, um, oh, you know, you're a really good programmer for a girl. Yeah. I was like, mm, you know what? I fixed your code. <laughs> <But> <laughs> they want to hear that. Right? So I, I, yeah, I can see how, how that would be um, a lifelong frustration. Now that I'm older, I think it's, it's not as bad for me personally, but you know, I mean, there's, I'll never outgrow being a woman, right? I still get, still get that occasionally. Right. <laughs> 
And, um, you know, we'll never outgrow our, our race and we'll never outgrow our ethnicity or, you know, coming from another country or having a disability. Like these are things that, you know, are struggle over and over and over. But, um, you know, I just, I long for the day when we can just all be, uh, taken on our merits and given the same benefit of the doubt, but yeah, that's hopefully one day, right? <laughs> so. We're a long way. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, yeah. see. <laughs> we'll see. So I want to ask you in the time that we have left um, to finish two sentences for me. The first one is I feel included when. Great. So I feel included when um, informed about new opportunities. Ooh, I like that. Okay. And when I feel included, I? When I feel included, I work better with the group and I give back. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And I, th I think that's true of most people, right? Most of us, we want to know what's going on. We want to give back. But if we don't feel safe to be ourselves, we can't, we can't put that ourselves out there like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, yeah. Yeah, you want to, want to feel included, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, it was great. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Awesome stuff. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.